Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today's video was highly requested. I am sharing my updated princess perfume collection. I have about 20 fragrances here that I would put in this category, some of which are my all-time favorites because this is really my fragrance personality style that I love to wear. I love anything that is unapologetically feminine, whimsical, a little soft, sweet, demure, just happy, relaxing fragrances. Something that when you spritz it on for the day, or maybe even the evening, you feel so beautiful. You feel radiant, like you are truly putting your best foot forward. I'm starting with a new love and one of my favorite fragrance discoveries of the year so far. This is Aludra from Spirit of Kings. It deserves all the hype. And this was sent to me from Max Aroma. I'm actually partnering with Max Aroma, so I do have a promo code that I can offer you. It gives you 10% off site-wide, but not only do you get your discount, you're also going to receive a little sample of Aludra because it's one of my favorites and I've already started hearing from some of you saying that you've tried it and you love it as much as I do which makes me so happy because she really is that girl. Keynotes include bergamot, lychee, rhubarb, turkish rose, peony, vanilla, musk, cashmere, vetiver, cedar, and incense. Its fragrance cousin is Delina from Parfum de Marly. That's the first thing that came to mind whenever I smelled this for the first time. So if you're a big fan of Delina, I think you will love this, no question. When I compared them side by side, they smelled so similar. It was really difficult to choose a favorite. I would say as it dries down, Aludra maybe has a little bit more vanilla present. And I think for me, that's what makes it inch out a little bit ahead. The lychee and rhubarb gives it that juicy, fruity, but an exotic fruity quality. The incense and vanilla is a little bit moody and seductive. The peony in the rose is so feminine. It just might be the princess perfume and I had never heard anybody else talking about this before. I feel like the word needs to get out. It's my responsibility to tell everybody about Aludra from Spirit of Kings because I just, I know with 100% certainty that people would go crazy for this fragrance, especially because it smells so similar to Delina, but a fraction of the cost. And it's amazing. It's just perfect for all occasions. Definitely a date night, a girl's night out, a brunch, a special occasion when you're getting dressed up. I think this could be a beautiful bridal fragrance, especially if you're getting married in spring, summer. This would be incredible. On top of the fruity notes and the floral notes, it has this sparkling effervescent quality that is just so light and happy and beautiful. This is a fairy princess perfume. And it's worth mentioning my two other favorites from Spirit of Kings because these are also incredibly princessy. This is Segura, comes with the white or silver label. And this one is Airai. Both incredible. I guess with a name like Spirit of Kings, you know they understand the assignment. I mean, just look at the bottles. Sagira has keynotes of grapefruit, peach, mandarin, toffee, violet, damask rose, patchouli, musk, and moss. It's a sparkling floral. And the peach note in there is so beautiful. It's like a peach bellini and a white floral base. Even though I would describe this as an ethereal fairy princess type of fragrance, it still has the amber, patchouli, the moss, the musk. So it's a very complex, luxurious, very elevated fragrance. Just incredibly elegant. This is not adolescent whatsoever. But it has a playfulness that I think is so refreshing. It has such a fun, unique personality. I get really excited. I feel inspired to wear a fragrance like this. And then Arai is an amber floral fragrance. Keynotes include rose, lemon, bergamot, iris, green notes, passion fruit, cedar, vanilla, musk, amber, patchouli, and vetiver. Not quite powerful enough to be considered a queen fragrance. It's still in the princess category, but it's another amazing scent. And such an interesting combination of notes. It has a very light citrusy twist, which is really unexpected, and I don't think you smell in a lot of fragrances. And the dry down is insane. The quality of the Spirit of Kings fragrances is really good. Another one that I just get really excited to wear. Sadly, Delina got the boot because it was replaced by Aludra, but Oriana from Parfum de Marly definitely deserves a place on this list because it's another beautiful 
pink princessy fragrance. It smells light and sweet like a delicious dessert. Keynotes include mandarin orange, bergamot, grapefruit, orange blossom, raspberry, black currant, whipped cream, marshmallow, musk, and ambret. Immediately I get that bright fruity burst of bergamot and mandarin and then a little sweet tart raspberry comes through. And then the marshmallow and whipped cream are like the cherry on top. This reminds me so much of the berry chantilly cake from Whole Foods. It is iconic. I love this fragrance. Greedy Tutu Extra de Parfum is for all of the ballerina princesses. It was inspired by Point Shoes, another fruity floral fragrance with a very creamy, dreamy dry down. This fragrance is perfect. I need it in a hair mist, a body oil, a candle, in all of the things because I just want to smell this all over myself, all over the place, all the time. The keynotes include coconut, apple, grapefruit, cassis, heliotrope, jasmine, rose, raspberry, musk, vanilla, and amber. It has everything that I love so much in a fragrance. I feel like this was made for me. And I'm probably going to say that about all of the fragrances that we're talking about today, but I just can't help myself. It's so interesting how they're all different, but sort of the same, definitely the same category. Princess. And this one started it all. I'm almost positive Elixir by Roja was the very first fragrance that I ever openly described as a princess perfume because there was just no better way. No other words could be used to describe the mood that this fragrance conveys. It's just dainty, demure, has never worked a day in her life, born into royalty, born into privilege. It's sweet, angelic, and it's the type of fragrance that you just want to wear all the time. You wanna wear this every single day because it's a mood booster. Keynotes include bergamot, raspberry, rose de may, peach, violet, heliotrope, ylang ylang, jasmine, geranium, lily of the valley, musk, vanilla, orris, cashmere wood, Violet leaf, sandalwood, ambret, cedar, and cinnamon. Just an incredible combination. And you know, I think filming this video is going to help me narrow down exactly what notes constitute a princess perfume. I'm already starting to see some patterns. Raspberry is one, peach, vanilla, of course, but I, maybe there's something in that combination of peach and raspberry. Whatever it is, I love it. Elixir is the quintessential princess perfume. I only recently unboxed this one, so it's very new to my collection. It's from Soradora, it's called Malo. As soon as I smelled it for the first time, I knew, yep, this is a princess perfume. And it has raspberry. That is definitely a common denominator. I don't know what it is. I had raspberries earlier with my breakfast. Maybe I just love raspberry. It has raspberry, vanilla sugar, pink pepper, heliotrope, orange blossom, almond, violet, black musk, and amber. It has a really zingy tart pop right away. It's almost a sweet and sour candy. Like, ooh, you kind of like, your nose winces a little bit. But then as it dries down, the sweetness dissipates. It's not quite so candy sweet. And it's just a pretty fluffy dessert fragrance. Very feminine, very playful, youthful, vibrant. I think this is a really fun fragrance to wear. This to me is more daytime, maybe a girl's brunch, running errands, when you just wanna feel really pretty. It's not date night and it's not special occasion, but if you're looking for a really fun, very flirtatious, slightly sweet spring summer fragrance, this would be perfect for you. Another more playful, very youthful fragrance that I actually get a ton of use out of is from Ariana Grande. It's called Thank You Next. And I would say this has one of the biggest dents in my collection because I wear it all the time. There's just something about this fragrance. These were not on my radar whatsoever, but then I did a campaign through Ulta at the end of last year. I think it was the end of last year where I picked them all up. And something about this just speaks to me. It kind of smells like toasted coconut. I think also I really like that my husband compliments me when I wear this fragrance. It's simple, it's sweet, it's a crowd pleaser, not overly complex. I wouldn't wear this for a night out or getting dressed up, 
but just running errands on a day-to-day -day basis, I feel so cute and precious whenever I wear this. And for my tropical princesses, I have both Moon Glory from The Harmonist and Cassiopeia from Tiziana Terenzi, two of my all-time favorite fragrances. They are so perfect for spring, summer. They make me feel beautiful, but they both have a tropical quality. Moon Glory has notes of ylang ylang, Hawaiian jasmine and lishi, honey, passion flower, lady of the night flower, Peru balsam, white musk, and hinoki wood. It's a bit powdery and you definitely pick up on the honey note. It's sweet, it just smells like ambrosia, <laughs> is that the word I'm looking for? Decadent dessert. This is on the more opulent side where it just smells incredibly luxurious. This could be getting dressed up going somewhere special and it has insane performance. One of the boldest, strongest fragrances in my collection. And what's interesting is that the notes aren't necessarily really powerful. It's like they just turned this up to 100 whenever they created Moon Glory. It's incredible. And then there's Cassiopeia with keynotes of passion fruit, cassis, lemon, and fern, tea rose, carnation, lily of the valley, tonka bean, musk, and sandalwood. The passion fruit, the vanilla, it smells a bit exotic. It smells like a tropical vacation, like the perfect summer vacation where you're just letting your hair air dry natural. You have beachy waves, sun-kissed skin, a seashell bra. <laughs> You've turned into a mermaid at this point in the vacation and this is what you smell like. Mermaid princess, I guess, would be the perfect descriptor. A lot of people have compared it to Britney Spears' fantasy, which I've never tried. I'm not sure they even make it anymore. I've looked it up, but I wasn't sure whether it was safe to just purchase it online from some sketchy website. I'd like to try it if I can get my nose on it just to see, just to compare. But that is also known as being one of the best, most successful celebrity fragrances. I don't care. This to me smells incredibly luxurious and elevated. It is a more expensive fragrance, but when I do run out of this, and I'm sure I will at some point, it could take me a while, but if that day ever comes, I will replace this without even thinking about it. It's so beautiful. It's just me in a bottle. Peregrina from Femin London is one of my favorite candied floral fragrances. It's a floral, but it also has so many edible qualities that it's also a gourmand. It's very unique. Keynotes include damask rose, gardenia, jasmine, lily of the valley, caramel, vanilla, amber, myrrh, ylang-ylang, amber, powdery notes, and white musk. It's just fabulous. If you love caramel, amber, vanilla, you know, those warm, ooey-gooey notes, but you also really like florals, I think you will love this. Part of me thinks this might lean a little bit fall winter. I do think it's seasonless, but I, for one, would probably grab some of my lighter, fluffier, more tropical princess perfumes right now. Ooh, maybe for an evening out for a date night, I think I would grab this now. If you live in a cooler climate, this is a must have. I have two picks here from Kayali. This is Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper 25. I think this is underrated. I don't hear enough people talking about this anymore. It probably had its moment in the sun when it first launched, but now we're just always being bombarded with what's new, what's new, what's new. It doesn't get the appreciation and the love it deserves. It's an incredible fragrance, so much fun to wear. Oh, it doesn't have the notes on the back. I know it has rose, definitely pink pepper and vanilla in there. That's all you really need to know because that's what you're going to smell most. This is a very flirtatious fragrance. This is like single gals night out, girls night out. And I always receive so many compliments whenever I wear this. My girlfriends compliment me. And in a way, I think that's maybe even better, feels a little bit better than if a man compliments you, I don't know. And then this is one of my favorites, one of the best fragrances, if not the very best, launch in 2023, Silk Santal. I've heard rumors it's coming back. I hope that's true. This one does have the notes. It's sparkling champagne, white freesia, pink praline, lush nectarine, sandalwood, and sugared musk. It smells sugary, delicious, probably because of the praline. If I found out that they were bringing this back and it was always going to be available, this would easily become my everyday fragrance. I hope that happens. I've been skipping around this entire time, but I have two final niche fragrances before we get into my designer princess perfumes. 
Florist London Cherry Blossom is the ultimate cherry blossom princess fragrance. So beautiful for spring and it is my favorite cherry blossom fragrance. I was going through a bit of a kick where I was on the hunt for a nice cherry blossom and I picked up a couple. I have a few in my collection including the really expensive girl on but this one is just perfect. It's a little bit aquatic. It has the sweetness. There's a little cherry in it as well. It captures the feeling of cherry blossom trees in full bloom, like the cherry blossom festival in Japan or Washington DC, where you look at the pictures and everything is pink and there are just petals everywhere. That's how this smells. Very whimsical, very dreamy. It's perfect. It's light, it's fresh. It's a bit more on the casual side, which I think is nice. It's good to have those casual princess perfumes. Princess off duty. And Jardin de Misfa from Une Nuit Nomad. This is an incredible fragrance. One of my favorites, again, a candied floral. It's gourmand, it's sweet, but it also smells like a garden. Keynotes include cardamom, nutmeg, dates, rose, almond and saffron. It's anytime, any place, any season when you want to smell delicious and incredibly feminine, that's when you wear this fragrance. And the almond saffron base is so unique. It's one of those niche fragrances that I know if this had a designer label and it was mass produced and sold in department stores, this would be the next Coco Mademoiselle. I mean, it has mass appeal incredible. I think all three Love Shack Fancy fragrances would fall into this category. You look at this bottle and you already know what the mood is of this fragrance. It has peony, black currant, white amber. It's stunning. An aquatic floral, a fairy princess perfume, another casual princess on the go type of fragrance. I love peony so much. That's another note that often grabs my attention in fragrance. And I love the berry note in here as well. It makes it a little bit different. So much fun and easy fragrance to love. Long Comey Doll Nectar is another one of the most underrated fragrances. It is incredible. It's very sweet and flirty and fun and just easy to wear. I love this so much. I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. It has caramel popcorn, rose, vanilla. It's a candied floral, but that caramel popcorn is really interesting. I think this would be a fun girls night, date night, a night out in Miami type of fragrance. Devotion by Dolce & Gabbana. This is such a sweet treat for the nose. I love this fragrance. Keynotes include candied lemon, panna cotta, orange blossom, rum, and vanilla. They need to make a dessert inspired by this fragrance because it smells like it would taste incredible. It just transports me to vacation. I think of sunshine laying out on the Amalfi Coast somewhere. Just very glamorous, carefree, shopping through the streets of Italy and just buying whatever you want and eating whatever you want. It smells like the perfect day. And my final two fragrances are both from Dior, Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet and Belle Du Jour. I love both of these so much. I also pulled out my original Miss Dior that could technically be a princess perfume, but I think between the two, there's just something about Miss Dior Blooming Bouquet. I love this fragrance. One of the best florals in my opinion. It has rose, peony. It smells like a fresh bouquet of flowers, incredibly feminine. And then Belle Du Jour has pear, rose, and vanilla. This is one of the most beautiful florals. I think this would make an incredible wedding day fragrance. There's just something about it. This to me says bride. It's so sweet and juicy from the pear. It gives you that burst right away where your mouth starts to water. And then as it dries down, it just becomes one of the most beautiful florals that I've ever smelled. It is so special. I save this because I just don't want to waste it. And that completes my princess perfume collection. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I'm curious if you have any favorites or any fragrances that you would also put in this category. If you know of any that I missed, drop them in the comments. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.